Safe winter operation procedures are required by airline maintenance, engineering, flight crews, and de-icing personnel. Flight crews need to be aware of these procedures to include the de-icing, anti-icing, cold weather maintenance, and flight operations. The duties of the maintenance and ground staff, including the de-icing staff during winter operations, will be discussed, as well the flight crew responsibilities during each phase of flight, starting prior to taxi, during taxi, takeoff, descent, and landing. These procedures are general guidelines. Please refer to your airline's operating manual for specific procedures. Airplane operation in cold weather conditions can cause special problems, because of the effects of frost, ice, snow, slush, and low temperature. Procedures by the airline for removal of contaminants from the airplane, and prevention of subsequent accumulation of frost, ice, snow, or slush, in addition the airline must ensure that the maintenance procedures for winter operations are appropriate for the weather conditions. Maintenance and ground staff need to be aware of how frequently airplanes are being de-iced or anti-ice, and be aware that damage may occur to flight controls landing gear tires and carbon brakes. The clean airplane concept describes an airplane that is aerodynamically clean that is free of frozen contaminants. The clean airplane concept is important because airplane takeoff performance is based upon clean surfaces until lift up, an airplane is designed using the predictable effects of airflow over clean wings contaminants such as frost, ice, or snow adhering to the wings disturb this airflow, resulting in reduced lift, increased drag, increased stall speed, potentially severe roll problems due to uneven lift and possible abnormal pitch characteristics. By regulations, the flight crews may not take off an aircraft when frost, ice, or snow is adhering to the wings, control surfaces, engine inlets or other critical surfaces of the aircraft. Take off with frost under the wing in the area of the fuel tanks may be authorized by your country's regulators. Also the airline must have an approved ground de-icing anti-icing program in its operation specification, that includes hold over timetables, Flight crews should carefully inspect areas where surface snow, ice, or frost could change or affect normal system operations, perform a normal exterior inspection with increased emphasis on checking surfaces, pitot probes, static ports, air conditioning inlets and exits, engine inlets, fuel tank, landing gear doors, landing gear truck beam, brake, assemblies and APU air inlets. All leading edge devices, all control surfaces, the horizontal tail, vertical tail and upper surface of the wing must be free of snow, ice, and frost. Perform the normal engine start procedures, but note that oil pressure may be slow to rise. Displays may require additional warm-up time before engine indications accurately show changing values. Displays may appear less bright than normal engine anti-ice. Anti-ice must be selected on immediately after both engines are started and it must remain on during all ground operations. When icing conditions exist or are anticipated, do not rely on airframe visual cues before activating engine anti-ice, use the temperature and visible moisture criteria, check the flight controls and flaps to ensure freedom of movement. If there are any questions as to whether the airplane has frozen contamination, request de-icing, never assume that snow will blow off, there could be a layer of ice under it. It is recommended during winter operations to use all engines during taxi, allowing greater than normal distances between airplanes while taxiing, will aid in stopping and turning in slippery conditions. This will also reduce the potential for snow and slush mean blown and adhering onto the airplane or engine inlets. 
The taxi at a reduced speed taxing on slippery taxiways or runways at excessive speed or with strong crosswinds, may cause airplane to skid. Use smaller nosewheel steering and rudder inputs, limit thrust into the minimum required, if the taxi route is through ice snow slush where standing water or precipitation is falling, with temperatures below freezing. Taxi out with the flaps up. Taxing with the flaps extended subjects the flaps and flap devices to contamination, during taxi in after landing on a contaminated runway, flight crew should consider leaving flaps extended to prevent damage, before ground personnel can inspect the flaps. If you have de-iced, be aware of your hold over time, do the normal before takeoff procedure, extend the flaps to the takeoff setting at this time. If they have not been extended because of slush, standing water, icing conditions, or because of de-icing or anti-icing. Consider the aircraft performance. If operating on a contaminated runway, verify that airplane services are free of ice, snow, and frost before being into position for takeoff. After setting takeoff power, check that engine indications are normal, in agreement, and in the expected range. Check that all other flight deck indications are also normal, rotate smoothly and normally at VR do not rotate aggressively when operating with the de-icing, anti-icing fluid, retract the flaps at the normal flap retraction altitude and on the normal speed schedule, a larger temperature difference from international standard atmosphere, results in larger altimeter errors, check your airline guidance and jeppesen charts. For further anticipate the need for activating the engine and or wing anti-ice systems at all times, especially during a descent through instrument meteorological conditions, or through precipitation. When anti-ice systems are used during descent, be sure to observe your operating manual anti-icing and engine limitations. The flight crew must be aware of the condition of the runway with respect to ice, snow slush and other contamination. Consider landing performance and runway conditions and consult your performance manual, to determine stopping distances. Follow the normal procedures for approach and landing. Arm the auto brake and arm the spoiler systems, if available before landing. The airplane should be firmly flown onto the runway at the aiming point. Immediately after the main gear's contact with the runway deploy the speed brakes, if not already deployed by the automatic system. Without delaying, lower the nose wheel to the ground to gain nose wheel directional control. Do not hold the nose gear off the runway, when operating on slippery or icy runways, use of auto brakes is recommended. They will allow the pilot to better concentrate on directional control of the airplane. If manual braking is used apply moderate to firm steady pedal pressure symmetrically until a safe stop is assured. Let the anti-skid system do its work. Do not pump the brake pedals. Do not use a symmetric reverse thrust on an icy or slippery runway unless necessary to arrest a skid. When using reverse thrust be prepared for a possible skid on a slippery runway with a crosswind during winter operations. The flight crew should not attempt to turn off the runway until the airplane has slowed to taxi speed. Continue to use the engine anti-ice system, during all ground operations, when icing conditions exist or are anticipated.